Good evening. This is a video on how to create and use Maltigo transforms. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make four quick videos that will culminate in us sort of creating a project because that's the best way to sort of learn and, and use uh, these tools. The first video is going to be an overview of uh, what we're looking at, what we're going to do, and then setting up the environment. The second video, we're going to create our first transform and use it to push data into Maltigo. The third video, we're going to advance our transform a little bit and use Maltigo to push data back into our scripts. And then finally, in the fourth video, we're going to use it to build something. For the overview, there's not too much to say. We're going to be using Linux, but really you can do this with Windows or Mac. We're going to be coding in Python. I'm going to be using very basic Python. It's going to be easy and obvious. The really neat thing, though, is you can use any language you want. You're not limited to Python at all. And we'll cover that. It's not a Python course, so I won't be explaining that too much. Um, We'll introduce Maltigo, talk about some of the elements, and end up talking about the use cases. With that being said, let's set up our, our Maltigo environment. This is a stock uh, installation of Linux. Uh, there have been no modifications, although really quickly, like to modify my terminal. There are aliases that I like to use. But that's just a preference thing. Terva is the company that makes this product. We're going to use the Community Edition, the free version. As you can see, it's available on all the major platforms, and we're going to download the Debian package for Linux. Pseudo DPKG TACI. And Maltigo Community Edition is installed. It's that easy and that fast. Well, we've got the browser open. I'm going to download the Python libraries. These aren't necessary. We'll show you how to do it without it, but they're nice to have. So let's go grab them. We'll just throw it in downloads for now. Let's have a quick look at Maltigo. Because we're going to be in and out of this program, I'm just going to throw it down here. Now when Maltigo first comes up, there are a couple things we're going to do, and that is load some, some basic 
pour objects or entities into it. So I'm going to install the Perturba CTAS right here. It's free, it's fast. And let's grab the case file entities as well. And that's it, we're all set up. If you haven't seen Maltigo before, bring up an example file. Maltigo is fantastic for two things, collecting data and information and it's also good at representing that data and information with context. So in this example graph here, the detailed view over here tells me about the object I'm hovering over. This is a domain. This here is DNS. This is an IPv4. These objects in the graph are, are called entities in Maltigo. And against different entities, I can run scripts. These scripts are called transforms. So let's look at this. The properties of this location, if I double click it, I've got name, city, country, street address, area code, etc., etc., are different than the properties of this entity, which is an IPv4 IPv4 address. As you can see, that's very different. Also, if I right click an entity, I've got transforms I can run. These are transforms attached to the IPv4 address entity. If I was to right click a different entity, it's got different transforms available to it. There are a couple things. Well, another thing actually is it visually represents the data and gives us context of these relationships. You can demonstrate a couple different things. I can change the view and change the object size based off of the relationships I have with everything else. So for example, if I switch the graph like this, now I can kind of see a heat map of the objects that are interacting more than other objects. This is fantastic. So if I was going to enumerate all the servers in my environment and the services they're running, I can look at things like workloads or find my SQL servers and in sort of with that context, uh, decisions and what's happening becomes much more intuitive than if you were looking at grids of data. You can, you can move these things around You can represent the information a variety of different ways. It's very flexible. One final point to make is the entities and transforms. You can create your own, and we're going to do both of those things. So if I want to make a custom entity with custom properties, it's absolutely easy to do. And the other thing we're going to learn is how to make our own scripts, our own transforms attached to those entities.